Lumbar enlargement signal to the legs. So you must understand that. Sit down, draw it out over and over again if you have to. It doesn't have to be a beautiful drawing. Okay? You can sit down and go, oh, okay. And I do this. seconds. All right, I've practiced more than you. Okay, with a little bit of practice, you can do it. Now, the important thing to remember in here is this extra little branch that goes to the upper part of the face. So, in this scenario, we have some problem that occurs somewhere between here and the superior aspect of the font. That problem can be anywhere in there. It's not necessarily the whole thing. What you have to remember is, if I put a roadblock here, does the signal get down? No. If I put the roadblock there, does the signal get down? No. These are at opposite ends of the salmon-colored junk there, okay? So that's important to remember. If it wasn't for this signal here, this would also be involved. Do you understand why? No? What do you mean by this would also be involved? You see how the upper, upper part of the face here is not involved, there is no problem. You lose from here down, so the muscle weakness from here down, but here, perfectly fine. Why? Nope. Nope. What? Is this decussation? No, it's way before the decussation. It's got to do with Well, it's not showing you a synapse, there, but this one is going to synapse, and the signal is going to go there. So the signal coming from the face here comes down. It has two synapses on this side that go to the upper and lower part of the face, but it comes over, synapses over here, and goes to the upper part of the face, so that this part is coming from there. You must pay attention to anywhere a signal bifurcates like that. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. It's bifurcating there. Actually, it's, it's trifurcating. Okay. Two signals are going to lower face and upper face, and the signal coming to the upper face on this side also comes to the upper face on the other side. It splits. Yeah. So they lose the nerve to, that's going to go to their right side of the picture. 
Okay. To the upper part of the face. Yep. But they're still receiving information from the right side of their brain to the upper part. No. There was, so the, okay. Let, let's use left and right with reference to the brain. The okay. signal to the face here is all coming from the left side of the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay? Turns out the signal coming to the upper part of the face not only gets a signal that is contralateral, but also gets a signal that is ipsilateral. So that this region gets bilateral inputs. So that's why you do not have the muscle weak. That's why it's so hard to lift one eyebrow. From this part it feels right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So if a person can lift one eyebrow, uh -huh. and they lose the, that nerve, that side of their, okay, if you lift your left eyebrow, then your right eyebrow will be affected. Okay. So that means if you get a, it's, <laughs> no, 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 it's, it, if there's it, a bleed in the internal capsule on yeah. the right side, that means they can no longer lift that left eyebrow? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> That's all right. No, I understand what you're doing. I understand what you're doing. However, both signals come to this neuron. All right? You're getting two, assuming it's one neuron, it's a group of neurons. But you're getting signals coming there from both sides. So if I knock one side out, you won't see a physical manifestation. You just have one left. No. <laughs> no, you still. This upper neuron is getting a signal from here and there. So it doesn't matter. If you eliminate the signal from one side, it's still getting it from the other side. So I don't think you would notice a difference. Yeah. yeah. So it's just for the upper portion. Of the That's it. That's it. For this, uh, that's why some that's people it. do move the eyes, like blink the eyes, like yes and no. Like that, that, well, uh, in, in, that, that's, yeah, that's kind of complicated um, because we're going to have bilateral loss, and the minute you have bilateral loss, it becomes crazy. Usually, what's involved with that is you have very high brainstem damage, and the signals can still get to the I think I read from an article from somewhere saying a guy he got a deaf dog. All he all he can do is like, blink his eyes. Yeah, blink his yep. eyes. And they have like a, like somebody right before him. Yep. Like A, and then he'll blink and not blink yep. and then B or something like that. And yep. I don't remember what. But that's not this. Okay. So let's let's get let's get through these. All right. <laughs> so this. Hemiparesis, damage, most, you know, so we can have internal capsule bleed, so we're bleeding up here, we can have a bleed in the upper part of the pons, it must be in the superior aspect of the pons, if it's lower in the pons, we can have all sorts of other problems, it can be due to a demyelination, through this area. It could be due to a tumor in this area or an abscess in that area. The important thing is the damage here is going to occur in that area, okay? Now, on occasion, you can have global damage in the cortex. That affects every, this whole area up here. So with additional defects, all of this is, is similar, arterial blockage, hemorrhage, tumor, trauma. This tends to be more involved with trauma than the earlier one. Typically, trying to get trauma that is only going to affect you from your internal capsule down to your, your pons, is, I, I don't know what kind of trauma that would be. So, okay? And you can herniate, have herni go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think 
know, herniating, brain herniation typically will affect this area in here, and you'll have some of the brain just doing weird things. So, all right, let's keep going. So what we're going to do now is below the neck, and then we're going to involve the face and the upper torso and arm, but not the lower body. So here we're going to have hemiparesis sparing the face. The face is not involved. Only two ways to accomplish this. One is kind of between the cervical enlargement and um, inferior to the pons. So you can't, you're not involving the, the nerves that are going to the face. And it has to be at the cervical enlargement. If it's below the cervical enlargement, it's only going to involve the leg and not the upper torso. So do you see how this, is, how this works? OK? Or you can have. Um, an event on the brain, you can have trauma, um, bleed, stroke, uh, tumor, that affects the motor cortex from the arm over to the leg. So once again, cortical bleed, trauma, cervical spinal cord compression, which would involve this, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease that can affect many different things. So now, unilateral face and arm. This one, you, you'll say is, oh, this is kind of weird because it's going to affect the face, the upper torso, and the arm. This is it. That's the only place the damage can be. And if you take the time to walk through and look at this, you realize, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. If the damage were down here, this we could extend a little bit this way, but if the damage were down here, we'd affect the leg. If it was down here, we'd affect everything. Does that make sense? Once you learn how to read this, it all starts to fall into place. I will be posting these tonight. Brachial monoparesis, one arm. Brachial uh, cural monoparesis, one leg, one arm. Typically, two problems. One is a very discrete lesion or tumor in the brain. You affect only the arm region of the uh, homunculus. The other is you affect the nerves after they leave the cervical enlargement. That's it. Anywhere else in here is going to affect other areas. Peripheral nerve damage, injury or diabetic neuropathy, motor cortex, bleed, tumor, and abscess. Bang. All right, one leg. One leg, in many respects, very similar. Unilateral damage to the cord on one side. So this can be anywhere from below the cervical enlargement to the um, lumbar enlargement. And it's going to affect the leg on that one side. Or a discrete problem, the motor cortex. So. Um. Facial weakness here. Facial weakness is a tough one. So we got Bell's palsy, trauma, a bleed in the pons, or even in the medulla adjacent to the pons. <clears throat> What's happening here is that you are knocking out all of the signal coming out of the pons. If you have this signal coming down to here, it's not getting through. Does this make sense? 